All right, so my name is Dr. Perez and I'm the proud principal here at Reynolds Elementary. And on the call with us, I have our student support specialist, Ms. Shanaria Perry. And then we also have our campus testing coordinator, Ms. Chandra Carthurn. Um, and they are, they're the, really the individuals that plan and, and implement all of our state testing, um, along with one other individual. Her name is Nicole Seaver. She is our LELPAC rep and she does our local testing as well. Um, during this meeting, if there's any specific questions that you have, um, please write those down in the chat. If we can answer it today, we will. If not, we'll definitely keep notes of any questions that you may have, and we'll definitely get back to you. But the purpose of today's meeting is to go over state testing. And so we do have state testing that's going to be um, fast approaching. Then, and we're going to talk about STAR assessment as well as TELPASS. And these are our state uh, assessments. And so there's some certain caveats and requirements that go along with that. And like I said, I will be sharing all of the resources reviewed today. And so the two uh, exams that we'll be talking about are STAR and TELPASS. First, we'll start off with STAR. What is STAR? And STAR is the state of Texas assessment of ready, academic readiness. Um, and this is our chance to assess your child's preparedness to move on to the next grade level. And students in grades three through five are assessed. In third grade, they take reading and math. In fourth grade, they take reading and math. And fifth grade, reading, math, and science. Those of you that have been around a while are wondering, well, where's the writing test? This is the first year we are not taking a writing assessment. And then the assessment is administered over multiple days. And um, something that came about during the pandemic that I believe is gonna continue this year is we've got, we're not testing every single grade level on the same day like we have in the past. And so there's multiple days listed. And again, days are subject to change. So when a student takes the STAR assessment, they get results in the following three categories. They can get approaches, meets, or masters, or they can get did not meet. Now, did not meet means they were unsuccessful and did not meet the minimum expectation. Approaches grade level, it's, it's roughly around the 50 to 57% correct range. And it's basically saying that the student is approaching the TEKS in the subject area that they were tested. Um, then you have meets. Meets is where they've met the expectation, they're ready. Um, we, our goal is for our students to be at minimum at meets. And then you've got masters. These are students who have exceeded and they've mastered the TEKS in the subject area that is tested. Students are given credit for successfully passing the assessment if they get approaches, meets, or masters. As it relates to our campus accountability, the higher the, um, the threshold that they score in, the more credit or points we get when we're formulating to get our letter grade as a campus. And so um, it is important for us to note that although approaches is passing, approaches would entail us monitoring a student next year for possible intervention because they have not yet met the expectation. So Upcoming practice, you know, we always want to make sure our students have opportunities to take a practice exam and see where they're at. And so we're in a good space having this meeting early this year so that you as parents are aware that in February, late February, the week that we have President's Day holiday, our students are scheduled to take their benchmark. Our district benchmark this year will be a mock exam. It will be a full star exam we will do our full shutdown. It will be on the computer and it will mimic the exact way they will test on the real star day. And so as students take that assessment, they're gonna get their uh, percentages. We're gonna use those scale score conversions just like it was the real thing. And they will know if they got approaches, meets and masters. And this is going to be the best predictor for us to know how well the students are progressing. And it'll give us a good six, to eight weeks for us to be able to target intensely where they are and where they need to get them to the next threshold. When I say threshold, I'm talking about if they, for example, on the practice exam came out at approaches, we're not gonna say our job is done, they got approaches. We're gonna target them to jump to meets. 
And if they're at meets, we're not going to say our job is done. We're going to target them to get to masters. If they're at masters, it is actually the hardest group for us to target because we've got to make sure that they stay at masters. And so um, however they do on this practice exam, the job is not done for us as um, teachers and administrators as we're monitoring. We are going to keep pushing them because our goal is centered around that meets and masters. We want to send our students to the next grade level saying they've met expectations, not just approached. And so that, that those results are going to be used for us to determine and develop our intervention groups in that six to eight week plan, as well as tutorials. So what do we do as a campus to prepare our students for the STAR exam? Well, first, you've got our classroom instruction. And this year, we have a very rigorous curriculum that we're using for math and for reading. We use small group classroom intervention. We call it acceleration now, and that is every single day, 45 minute block, every single day where students are receiving acceleration time. We are starting tutorials next week. So some of your students may be coming home with letters or have already came home with letters. Um, we're starting our initial stages of tutorials. And then we have the benefit of having some online support programs. These programs I've shared in the DILO, our weekly newsletter. And they include ST Math, which is a great resource for conceptual math skills. We've got Amplify Reading Texas, which actually is an adaptive program to target comprehension and reading. And then you've got Education Galaxy, which I'm gonna hit on in a little bit, where it is the actual state standard that they're being taught and assessed on. And the, the questions and practice games that Education Galaxy does actually mirrors STAR. And so some of those stems are going to be identical. Now, there are some changes this year that we want to make sure that our parents know. One, everyone is testing online. That is a new state expectation, and every student will test on the computer. And so if you see your students talking about how we're doing a little bit more work on the computer, we've got to plan for that transition. Um, up until now, all of their district assessments have been online. We're going to be looking at transitioning more of their assessments online just to give them some extra practice. Also new this year, fifth graders, if your fifth grader does, is not successful on the STAR test, in previous years, the SSI rule was in play where that would um, result in retention. That is not the case this year. SSI is not in play this year. And so we will be using their grades and other data to determine promotion. We're not just solely basing it on their STAR exam. Also, students who qualify for accommodations will have them embedded into the computer-based test. And so we do have students in special programs who qualify for some accommodations. Um, and so those are gonna be embedded. We're not doing, um, we used to do them kind of like paper-based. In some cases, we will have some supplemental aids, but there are some designated supports that are no longer available on paper-based. It is online embedded. So what are the star dates? The rule of thumb right now is to know the week of May 10th. The week of May 10th, starting on from that Tuesday through Friday is when our students will be testing. We have at most two grade levels testing on a given day, um, but they will only take one test per day. Um, but that week of May 10th to May 13th is when our STAR exams will take place. And these are shutdown days. We'll be on a, on a modified schedule um, and all that communication will come out as the day approaches. So what we're gonna be sharing this year that we hadn't in the past is I went through um, our history of testing. Uh, we have a resource called Lead Forward, and it tells you what are the TEKS, the skills that have been highly tested. So if, if there is one thing that you as a parent can focus on with them, it's these skills, because these skills alone will make up more than half the assessment. If they were to get these skills right, they would at minimum be at approaches. And so I was able to pull out these skills and, and to most people, you're like, well, what do those numbers mean? That's where Education Galaxy comes in. So 
On the Dillo this week, I'm also going to share again a tutorial. I'm probably going to make a video showing you how to go in Education Galaxy and find the skill. So you as a parent at home can say, hey, Johnny, today I want you working on addition and subtraction. We're going to be doing 3.4a and 5a. When they log in Education Galaxy, you can find that skill and have them practice on that. And the, the beauty of it is Education Galaxy creates games and everything. So it's fun. But the level of the questioning and sometimes even the way that the questions are framed, it mirrors STAR. And so for math and for reading, I pulled out the highly tested TEKS. Um, and in reading, they're more genre based. So I've been able, I was able to clump them for you all so that if, if you have time at home, these are the topics that you want them practicing at home. And this is what's going to directly align to the test. So these are the third grade highly tested skills. Now, the difference in third grade, um, this is the first year that they're reading to learn. And so a lot of the skills that are tested are gonna be very text-based or inferencing. And so you're gonna hear their kids talk, your kids talking about inferencing a lot. That is the hardest thing because they're not gonna find that in the text. So that's where you help them find the clues, come up with a good guess, a good conclusion based on what they read. And so these are the skills for third grade. In fourth grade, the only main difference that you need to know in math is we're adding some decimals and we're adding the angles and a little more depth with the fractions. So the fractions are pretty highly tested and that's comparing fractions, um, it's representing fractions and it's even multiplying, adding fractions. And then when you're looking at um, the reading side, you're just adding a new genre, you're adding drama. So they would be reading a play. Um, you're also looking where it says on the top for reading, uh, making connections, it's making connections from one text to another. And on the test, it's called a paired passage. And so they may read a nonfiction that has to do about horses and then read a fictional story about horses. And they're gonna have to draw connections between the two but most of the standards are very similar. And when it comes to fifth grade, it's nearly in, on the reading side, it's completely identical. You just have the addition of synthesizing and that's where it's a form of summarizing text and making their own. And then you've got the coordinate planes in math and then you have volume added to the formulas that they'll use for geometry. Um, but these, if, if as a parent, you're like, hey, how can I help them? These are the skills you want to have them practice. Um, and so that will definitely give you the most bang for your buck. So now we're going to talk about TELPASS. And TELPASS is actually an exam that a big majority of our kids take. So any student who is either receiving um, English language services, so they're participating in our bilingual program, or they're participating in our ESL, and or even denied services, meaning that another language other than English was listed on the home language. We offered the program, but even the, if the parent said no, if they met state criteria as an ELL, we're required by law to have them take this assessment. And this assessment is designed to uh, assess how a student has progressed in the acquisition of the English language. And they take this across four domains, listening, reading, speaking, and writing. If they're a kindergartner and first grader, it's holistically rated. They don't take a physical test. But once you get into second grade, they actually take a computer-based test. And so that's the biggest change um, once you get to second grade. Now, the Telpass window is a very big window. We actually start here in a couple weeks in February with the writing window, and that's where students are writing samples, and we're collecting samples and building a collection. And then the online form of testing starts in March, and that's where they take the listening, speaking, and reading test um, online. So Telpass students in grades two through five will take the speaking, reading, and listening test online. It is a state assessment. So just like the STAR test, we have requirements for environment that we have to make sure that are there. It's a secured testing environment. We will share the calendar with parents just so you know the upcoming test dates. And then students will have been provided an opportunity to practice. 
So just to share with parents the rubric for the speaking um, telepass, because it's actually surprising that students don't do as well on the speaking. And it has to go back to the grammar, the syntax that they're using, their pronunciation, their word choice. And so this has a direct correlation with their reading as well. So the better they're reading, the better their speaking is gonna be. When it comes to writing, where we're collecting physical samples, students are gonna submit at minimum five samples. We're gonna go through them and pick the best five samples indicative of their ability and create that, five, that collection of five samples. There are some requirements that have to do with like content areas. There's gotta be a math and science one. There's gotta be one that has to include a past narrative to really get a good grasp of their dominance of English as reflected in their writing. And just to indicate on the writing, like students can't just copy language. It can't be formulaic. We can't give them dictionaries and, re and thesauruses. Um, teachers can't give corrections. It has to be authentic writing that hasn't been proofread. No worksheets, no closed ended questions. And just making sure that there's no evidence of any type of polishing. We wanna see the raw uncut writing that the students have to show basically we're not assessing the writing, we're assessing their acquisition of English as through their writing. So, these are some of the topics that we utilize. Um, so your students may come home talking about, hey, I had to write this today. Um, we've already been practicing some writing samples and we're gonna continue practicing because we wanna make it as painless as possible whenever the moment comes for them to actually do their telepath samples. And samples collected during the window are the only ones that are able to be included in the collection. So there are some resources that I'm gonna share with parents. One is Summit K-12. This is um, only for our ELL students, but they have access to that. That's a practice that's gonna prep them for Telpass. And then for STAR and Telpass, there is Cam uh, Cambium. There's some practice tests there that um, students can also use to get ready. So all that to say, we hope we have a very smooth testing uh, season. It's a very busy season. Um, if you have any questions at all or um, want any more resources, just let us know. Um, I plan on the Dillo including um, a, a tutorial of how to log into Education Galaxy and pull out those standards. Um, we'll also begin doing countdown um, type activities where students are gonna be coming home talking more about like, hey, this is the strategy I learned and whatnot. Um, but our goal is just to A, help them be as successful as possible on the day of testing, because that honestly, they've been working so hard, but more than anything, alleviate any of the nerves. We don't wanna create an environment where students feel pressured or too stressed. And so with your help uh, in helping us prepare them, we will definitely be set up to have them be successful on their assessments. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and make sure there's nothing in the chat that I need to address right away. Um, but if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us um, and we are here to serve. Thank you parents for joining us today.